Fun of the cow, mammals. Let's take some time to talk about Mike Rogers and why the FISA memo matters so damn much. Now the world is waiting with bated breath for the release of the FISA abuse memo penned by Representative Devin Nunez. However, this memo merely summarizes what many of us have known since the director of the NSA, Admiral Mike Rogers, was threatened with firing back in 2016. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court has been used to break the law and violate the constitutional rights of American citizens, and in many cases, weaponized as a political tool by the sitting administration, specifically the Obama administration. We're going to be going through a lot of information in this video, so buckle in and be sure to look at the references down below. Everything I'm linking is either a document released by the House or the Senate or the FISA court themselves. These are all the direct sources, and honestly, you have to read them yourselves to get the full information. Buckle in, it's going to be a wild fucking ride. The publicly available information begins to unfold on the 19th of November, 2016, when the Washington Post reported on an otherwise nondescript story. The Defense Secretary, Ash Carter, and Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, had recommended to then-President Obama that he remove Admiral Michael Rogers from his position as the Director of National Security Agency. This article does not go into detail as to why this recommendation was made, instead addressing that Admiral Rogers was being considered for the Director of National Intelligence by then-President-elect Donald Trump, and covering the leaking of NSA tools by Harold Martin. It was likely the, in the former President's best interest that he did not follow through on that recommendation and fire Admiral Rogers, in my opinion, entirely because that would have unraveled his entire operation of spying on Americans. Now, the 19th of November 2016 is a very important date in all of this. It comes just two days after the news reports had come out about Admiral Rogers traveling to Trump Tower to speak to the president-elect directly without informing his boss, the director of national intelligence, James Clapper. That same day, Trump's transition team announced that they will be moving all transition activity out of Trump Tower to the Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey. What else began happening after that day informs us as to the reason for this sudden movement for Trump's magnum opus of real estate to a relatively unknown golf course. The president-elect accused the sitting president, Obama, of wiretapping him. With the newly incoming president under constant fire from media outlets and the Democratic Party over alleged collusion with Russia, very little of this made it to prime time. However, one interesting piece of evidence comes to light on the 6th of January, 2017, with the release of James Clapper's report titled, Assessing Russian Activities and Intentions in Recent U.S. Elections. This report was produced as a joint effort by the CIA under former director John Brennan, the FBI former, under former director James Comey, and the NSA under Admiral Mike Rogers, and edited and published by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence under Director James Clapper, with one assertion as its focus, and I quote, we assess Putin and the Russian government aspired to help President-elect Trump's election chances when possible by discrediting Secretary Clinton and publicly contrasting her unfavorably to him. All three agencies agree with this judgment. CIA and FBI have high confidence in this judgment. The NSA has moderate confidence. Except this wasn't entirely truthful on the part of James Clapper, as proven in Admiral Rogers' testimony before the Senate Armed Services Committee on May 9th of 2017. When questioned about his confidence in the Russia collusion story, Admiral Rogers said this, I wouldn't call it a discrepancy. I'd call it an honest difference of opinion between three different organizations. And in the end, I made that call. He also stated that the NSA didn't have the same level of sourcing and the same level of multiple sources as the FBI or CIA. When probed further, Admiral Rogers stated that while he was certain Russians had operated to interfere with the elections, 
he did not hold enough evidence that the Russians' interest was to aid Donald Trump. That is a fascinating thing to hear from the director of the agency who maintains records of all mobile phone calls and all signals intelligence and all internet usage in the United States. But the mainstream media, whose obvious bias towards Hillary Clinton had spun the Russian purchasing of advertisements against Hillary Clinton through the election on Facebook and Twitter into direct collusion between President Trump and Russia, fought to maintain their narrative, remaining unwilling to see any evidence which would speak to the contrary. Congressional investigations and hearings spanned the entirety of the first half of 2017, with James Comey and Admiral Rogers appearing before the House and Senate multiple times. The House intelligence hearings were headed up by Representative Devin Nunez, one of the so-called Intelligence Gang of Eight, the only oversight which exists for the extremely compartmentalized intelligence community within the United States. In addition to Nunez, the Gang of Eight in 2016 was comprised of Paul Ryan, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, Richard Burr, and Dianne Feinstein. All names which might seem familiar if you've been paying attention to the battle being fought over the FISA memo over the last two weeks. What makes the Gang of Eight special in their oversight is their right to interact with any intelligence product with the same level of security clearance as the compartment which they are reviewing, making them far more capable of understanding what is occurring within the intelligence community than even the House or Senate intelligence committees. During this time, Congress repeatedly called out the FBI and CIA for failing to conform with requests for information and compliance with oversight regarding counterintelligence operations that had been put into place by James Comey regarding the Russian interference into the election. On March 20th, 2017, in a House hearing regarding these investigations, Representative Elisa Stefanik uh, asked Comey why he had not informed congressional oversight about the counterintelligence operation which targeted then-candidate Trump and his staff. Comey responded that Director of Counterintelligence, Bill Priestap, suggested he not do so. This is, of course, completely illegal. The oversight protocols require the FBI Director to inform the Gang of Eight about any counterintelligence operations. On the 23rd of May, 2017, an online news source named Circa broke a story that mostly went unnoticed by the mainstream, titled, Obama Intel Agency Secretly Conducted Illegal Searches on Americans for Years. In this story, they report that more than 5% of searches seeking upstream internet data on Americans in the NSA's Section 702 database violated the very safeguards Obama and intelligence chiefs vowed to follow in 2011. They stated that the Obama administration disclosed these problems at a closed-door hearing on October 26th of 2016 before the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. However, this is not entirely accurate. The Obama administration had nothing to do with the disclosure of these violations of law and constitutional rights. This was entirely done by Admiral Rogers and Admiral Rogers alone. According to a damning top-secret report released internally to the NSA titled, Report on the Special Study of NSA Controls to Comply with the FISA Amendments Act, Sections 704 and 705B, Targeting and Minimization Procedures, which was later declassified on May 10th of 2017, the Inspector General identified a redacted number of queries which were performed outside the targeting authorization periods, as well as FISA Section 702 itself. The chart within the report shows that 7% point, excuse me, 0.7% and 1.4% of redacted types of inquiries were in violation of FISA Amendments Section 704 and 705. 1.3% of violation of uh, requests were in violation of Executive Order 12333, and 5.2% of requests were in violation of FISA Amendment Section 702, a total of 86 of all investigations, or slightly more than 1 in 12 searches, into the largest, largest database of American internet usage data. 
and Admiral Rogers was completely aware of this. Immediately after the Inspector General's report, Rogers put a stop to all Section 02 upstream about queries, which allow for searches on any subject within the NSA's upstream database on October 26, 2016. We know this not from the press release by the NSA in May of 2017, but from the transcripts of the open hearing on FISA legislation on June 7, 2017, when Senator Lankford questioned Admiral Rogers on the issue of noncompliance and illegal searches within Section 702 inquiries. He was aware of the violations, and he was aware of very specific violations including the counterintelligence operation enacted against then-candidate and then-president-elect Donald Trump, which is why he spoke to Trump directly, without informing the Director of National Intelligence. The Justice Department and intelligence community under Obama admi Obama's administration was not only in violation of the law, but working to conceal this fact and maintain their power to illegally search the databases of data gathered under FISA Section 702. Now at this point, there are still questions to be answered, and until the FISA memo is before my eyes, I am left with these questions. Why did the Justice Department's National Security Division forbid the Inspector General from handing over having oversight regarding FISA Section 702 and the National Security Division? Who is responsible for the unmasking of American citizens within FISA Section 702 reports, which led to the revelation that the FBI had begun a counterintelligence operation against Trump? Where is the supposed second FISA application which was submitted based on the supposed evidence provided in the Trump dossier to maintain surveillance on Trump? Why does none of the information we have now, and we have thousands of pages of declassified documents, FISA court applications and warrants, testimony from open and closed congressional hearings, etc., relate to the collecting of information regarding Russia and only point to surveillance of the American people and the Trump campaign and transition team specifically. If no wiretaps were actually needed for the counterintelligence operation against Trump, why was Christopher Steele's dossier created in the first place? And above all, was our intelligence agency, our entire intelligence community, weaponized to alter a presidential election? Unfortunately, I don't have much to offer until the FISA memo is released, so until then, bonsoir, my loves. More as stuff comes out. Mm -hmm.